Warning, the following contains graphic content and language some may find offensive. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Well done. Well, the Conservancy is really built about conserving nature, building the population of, of game in our area. Um, also, we, we, we're stewards of it, so we ensure that there's no poaching. We keep all of that out. And then as you can see, the animals are not, they're not too perturbed by people. So we monitor numbers as well. And then we try and put in, bring in the species that we, that used to be here, you know, and just enrich it to the point that people can not only enjoy the hunting side of things, but just seeing the game around. Okay, guys, day three here with the Salt Lake group. Got to guide some of the other guys of the group. And today I'm back here with my friend, Sean. We're looking for a hog deer in a big river section here. So uh, yeah, very excited. It's a cold morning, nice and frosty. Um, not much wind, so I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, we'll be looking for maybe a, a warthog, mainly hog deer, and uh, if we see a fellow, good we'll, fellow. We'll take it. Got to be a good fellow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been in country four days and not picked up a rifle yet in the entirety of history. That's never happened for me. But super happy to be back with my good buddy Hannes and. Once again, years worth of planning to make this happen, and we still Absolutely. got a few weeks left in, a, in another country after this too. So exactly, hopefully yeah. luck's going to be on our side this morning. We can get out there and uh, spot a good quality animal and make a ethical shot and let's do it. Make a plan just now. <laughs> make a plan just now. All right, okay, check it out. River section, we've seen a lot of deer movement here. So, our plan is to want to get on top of that ridge. I'm going to walk that ridge line and look down to the river bottom, and hopefully, we'll uh, spot a big uh, hog deer or a fellow or something. We've just heard a, a hog deer bark, so they're definitely here. Yeah, it's just a question of farming them and hopefully getting a shot. Perfect, perfect weather, very hot and almost minimal. The sun's up today, it's going to warm up quick, it should start moving. So.
there are moments that test your ethical compass, compelling you to make choices that transcend the pursuit of the game. Conservation, after all, extends beyond merely seeking out the largest or most venerable creatures within a herd. It encompasses the profound responsibility of acting in accordance with one's moral principles. Our narrative brings us to a defining juncture during the first morning of Hannes and my shared safari. Our friendship, which had been forged over years of hunting together, gave us an unspoken understanding of what was required, leaving no room for doubt. See that draw in back leg? Yep, I can see it from here. Yeah. How far? Okay, you're gonna shoot that. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, it's all done. Put another one in? Uh, I think it's. Uh, he's still alive. Yeah, he's hit. He's not now. Okay, we had a. Uh, at one of our free range properties and we saw a springbuck ram that had a bad limp on the back leg. I guess it's from, um, from probably from fighting or someone that maybe wounded him. And uh, we just thought it was the right thing to take him out because it really hurt. He was on his own yeah, down here in the corner. With the cold weather and everything, it, it wasn't going to end well for him. He was going to lose condition and uh, you know we're still going into the harsh part of winter. We're just on the doorstep of winter. So uh, yeah, it was about 216 yard shot. Sean, you did well. Yeah, a little bit, well a little bit of elevation, but I mean that's that's something important to talk about. That's also part of conservation too. Um, you know, you get those animals that are wounded and, and won't make it through the winter. You know, it's best to do the right thing, and then you can actually provide some food for the farmer and their family too at the same time. So it's a win-win for everybody. Um, you know, you don't want to see an animal suffer, so sometimes we need to put it down and yeah, move on to the next one. Yep, well done. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> okay. In this world of hunting, not every venture leads to success. That's the nature of the game we avidly partake in. However, during this particular outing, my PH and friend Hannes harbored distinct intentions, a quest for retribution of sorts. Up to this point, I've been fortunate enough to claim the trophies of five out of the tiny 10, an exclusive group of diminutive yet challenging dwarf antelope. This year, our sights were set on two more additions to this coveted list, particularly the elusive Cape Griesbach that had eluded us in the previous season. This time, Hannes had orchestrated a special arrangement, enlisting the expertise of a friend and professional hunter, Mr. Jordan Wardle. Jordan had graciously extended an invitation for us to hunt on his family's private conservancy, a veritable paradise nestled in the heart of the Thomas River area of the Eastern Cape. As you will soon discover, this farm was nothing short of awe-inspiring, a testament to the Wardle's commendable efforts in revitalizing a piece of land where a diverse array of species once thrived. The landscape was nothing short of breathtaking. The Wardles had dedicated themselves to the noble cause of reintroducing species that had once roamed these lands freely, rekindling the ecosystem's rich tapestry. Their commitment to conservation shone through every corner of the conservancy, demonstrating that their stewardship went well beyond mere honey. As an added surprise, Jordan tipped Hannes off about an exceptional opportunity. He mentioned a population of free-range fallow deer renowned for their exceptional caliber, which awaited us. The prospect of pursuing these magnificent creatures added an exciting twist to our expedition, underscoring the unpredictability and exhilaration that hunting in such a pristine environment offered. In the chapters that follow, you will join us on a journey through the captivating landscape, witnessing not only our pursuit of coveted game, but also our deep appreciation for the natural world and the dedication of the individuals like the Whirls, who work tirelessly to conserve and rejuvenate it. Okay, guys. So we're back on uh, chasing the tiny 10, we're hoping to get number six today. But while we've got time, we're going to look for a fellow deer. We're here in the Thomas River area, so it's between Stunaram and Catcog in the Eastern Cape. And a good friend of ours, Jordan Wall, and um, they've got a beautiful uh, 
conservancy going here and they, they do a lot for conservation and, and they've introduced a lot of species back into this area. We're really privileged to hunt this beautiful place. We hope we'll get a fallow deer and a beautiful race back. And um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens and uh, hopefully it'll be successful. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. The country's beautiful. It's, it's open, so it's going to be a challenge, but I wouldn't have it any other way. We never get the easy ones. <laughs> never. Now we got to work for it a little bit. Yeah, well, let's get after it and see what happens. Good get Are you good? I'm ready. Just wait. There's two behind each other. Okay. Yeah. There's another one at the back. You see it? Only coming out down the tree now. Okay. No, it's not as big. No. See, is, is the one that was behind him gone? Is it still there? The one fighting with the tree is probably it, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's in the can show me really you can uh, take that one fighting with the tree, okay. Alright, I've got some shit in front of him, it's light brush. I should be able to punch through. What's that? No, 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 there's uh, in front of him, in front of it. But I think I can pop yeah. through there. Okay, I'll, um Yeah. Ready? Yep. Watch yep. Oh, he just fell. He just fell. Well done, Sean. Good shooting. <laughs> 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 How was that, Sean? That's fantastic. That couldn't have worked out any go. better. Then, it's kind of like you made a plan. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see that green tank over there? That's where I saw them this morning. But I didn't move very far. Yeah. Just look at that view, eh? That's what a great shot. You see the others. In yeah. the mountain, he's back whirling out next to it. Yeah. Look at that. Eye guard's still intact. Yep. He, he didn't break much. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I see. Uh, but look at these brow tones here. Sure. Yeah. This is quite unique. That is unique. Yeah. Well Gents? Done. Sean, well done, man. Appreciate it. This is very unique. Yeah. Look at the hooks here, like. In. Yeah. Okay. That's and that's the reason I love hunting these things. Every one of them's different. You'll never shoot one that's like another one. Exactly. They're all unique. Springback look is the same. Yeah. yeah, all of them. But I don't care how many you've shot; they all look the same. <laughs> this is nice. Yes, yeah. older there. 
Yeah, we call them eye guards. Yeah, so they brow tines. On on whitetail, they'd be brow tines. Yeah. On a stag, we call them eye guards, like an elk. Yeah. So the longer they are, the older they are. It's, and it's then the shorter one is the one that he uses the most, so then he will know the left hand left, or right hand. Right hand dominant, yeah. yeah. When we put him up for a photo, you can actually see the dark spots on his back. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, last you left us, about 15 minutes ago, Hannes and Jordan had just made a plan. And as you can see, as usual with Hannes, shit has a tendency of working out. What do you think about that, buddy? Well, it was a fun hunt. You know, we came over the top, we came over this ridge, and we spotted these uh, four fallow deer stags that Jordan told us about that he saw this morning coming up the valley. And um, yeah, it just worked out that where we were was the perfect place. I think everyone was nice and comfortable from the cameraman to oh, the yeah. shooter. So, um, perfect yeah, setup. Yeah, perfect shot. You know, it's a beautiful chocolate stag. Um, it's here in the Thomas River area. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to hunt these free range areas and, and just enjoy, you know, we saw so many animals around, uh, mountain reed buck and all these stuff. So um, yeah, Sean, well done. Good no, shooting. No, thank you. Good Thanks hunting. both, you yeah, both yeah. of you too. No, yeah. you know, it's when, when you take your time and go in quiet and you get a good mm -hmm. position, it, it just it makes it so much easier. You know, there's no pressure. You don't have to be in a hurry. We got time to look at all the animals, mm -hmm. make the right decision. We picked the oldest stag that we thought was there. And, uh, you know, we, we made an ethical shot. He didn't make it 30 yards and he was down. So, no, I'm, I'm super pleased. And the thing about fallow deer, you know me, I'll hunt one every <laughs> single time I come with you because everyone is unique. Exactly. There's not there's not one that's like another one and, and they're all enjoyable. Yeah. And you know, hey, we're out here making memories, but uh, but thank you very much. And and Jordan, man, oh, man this, yeah. this place is fantastic, well, buddy. Thanks, eh? Yeah. I mean, beautiful farm. Tell us a little bit about it. So the Conservancy is really built about conserving nature, building the population of, of game in our area. Um, also, we, we, we stewards of it, so we ensure that there's no poaching to keep all of that out. And then as you can see, the animals are not, they're not too perturbed by people. No, they're def you know. definitely not pressured. No, everything's relaxed too. So we monitor numbers as well, and then we try and put in, bring in the species that, we, that used to be here, you know, and just enrich it to the point that people can not only enjoy the hunting side of things, but just seeing the game around yeah well and the, it's, like i said the setting is beautiful i mean the backdrop back here it just mm -hmm. you know coming from the states you know we don't get these opportunities you know in in the states there's very little times now where a farmer will allow somebody to come and hunt on his land so the relationships you guys have built over the years is really fantastic for us to come over and see and i wish more people stateside would kind of take something from what you guys have done and, and it just gets more people involved in the sport and it helps towards conservation and everybody's learning a lot but but yeah, and this is one of the most beautiful places we've had the opportunity to hunt together <laughs> all of our time. Exactly. And um, and it was just fantastic. It was, and we're not done yet. We're not done yet. No, I think we're gonna go grab a quick bite to eat and then uh, we've got a grease buck on the menu. I hope we found one. <laughs> Jordan's confident. <so. laughs> yeah. This, this, man, pretty, this man has, has, he, has delivered he, on his promises. He so. pretty much <laughs> walked us right to fallow deer, like instantly. No, no, they're going to be down there. Well, yeah. yeah, as luck would have it, he was right. Exactly. But once again, guys, thank you well, very much. Sean. It's, it's, it's pleasure. a pleasure. Thanks, great Thanks, great so. job, Mahbud. Well yeah. done. Good shot. All right. Jeez. Well, man. We, we, we've been planning this way before, and we've talked about it, and he's told me about the fellow, and he showed me pictures. So yeah. making this happen is, is really exciting. So I think let's go have something to eat, and then we'll go for the race back. Damn right. Let's Looking do it. Given that the Cape Priest Buck predominantly operates under the cover of night, we seized the opportunity to make a brief excursion into the nearby village. Our intention was twofold, to sample the local cuisine and indulge in a few refreshments while we waited patiently for the sun's descent behind the majestic mountain ranges. This interlude would pave the way for the second phase of our hunt on the water farm. What do you see there? Little pub. Yeah, a little pub. Yeah. I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it's a cool little place. I don't <laughs> even know where we are. <laughs> Living your best life, though. Absolutely. Magic. Never want to go home. <laughs> That's what keeps me coming back every year. Here you go, sir. Ah. Here you go. Cheers. Just, well, just cheers. Very well done. Thank you. Very, very well done. Cheers, man. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, on this. Well done, well done. 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 Well done.
Maybe we can see lots of races. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In hindsight, considering the East Cape's propensity for swift and capricious weather changes, we should have made better preparations for the dramatic temperature shift between day and night. It was an oversight we vowed not to repeat, a lesson etched into our memory. Nevertheless, our determination remained resolute, for we were driven by a singular purpose, and not even the biting cold could deter us from this fateful night. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the rugged terrain, we readied ourselves for the impending hunt. Knowing that the darkness would soon shroud the landscape, offering a cloak of concealment to our quarry. Beers too, Hannes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I didn't even think yet. I don't think that. One and a half, maybe. <laughs> I just want to make sure this thing doesn't go zzz when we see the Christ Park. We just see somebody pulling on this wire. <laughs> if we actually pull this off tonight, I'm making this fucker drink rum. <laughs> we'll have a couple of shots in the field. In the field. Mm hmm. Now the gzz part is we don't want the spotlight to go as we shining on the hey on us as we shining careful hands and feet and okay Shirach. yep so this is here too where we're going to try for the Cape Grace back um, we still here where we got the fallow deer today um, Jordan says he knows about I think about seven pairs that he knows of so we'll be driving with a spotlight on the edge of the field and um, that's where they'll be sort of on the edge of the field coming into the field. So we're looking for a male. Um, hopefully we'll find a good one. The creek moor's all set up, a spotlight set up. I think we're all going to put on some uh, nice warm jacket and warm gear, everything we have, and then we'll take a drive <laughs> better, and see what happens. You better put a sock, <laughs> sock on your tallywhacker too. It's cold out here. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Mm, it's cold. I mean, it's got to be... 40 Fahrenheit. It was zero here last night. So every fucking year we keep doing this. We come when it's the coldest part of the year. Yeah, we come at summer next year to do this I'm, shit. I'm telling you, hopefully we can find him and uh, we, yeah, hopefully we can uh, get his number. will be number six on the tiny uh, tent uh, for you. Yeah? It will be number six. Yeah, so uh, stacking him up. Yep, we're getting there. We're hopefully getting I there. can shoot with all this shit on. <laughs> you better be able to yeah. because you've just had one. <laughs> Okay. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Good luck, gentlemen. I'm set again. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a house, guy. All right, it's probably asking what I can. Now. It's still there, huh? Yeah, I can see the arm, but I can't. It's a thick picture. Yeah. It's a mile. So, Sure. I think there's, I think it's just zip through. No. I feel like I hit him fucking shit. Shoot him again, shoot him again. Oh, I got a good fucking hand on that. Just keep him in the middle. He just slid down right there. Okay. Guys, everyone, let's just give him five minutes. Let him just bleed. Sean, don't shoot him again, you're gonna hit the cake. In there. Got him. Hey. Sean! Oh, I got Got good news, buddy. It's a big one. You say it's a big one? No. Ah, ooh, ah, ooh. 
Okay, it's great, it's back. George! Daddy? Huh? Don't get to me. Yeah, yeah, there's fucking solid zip right through. Yeah, zip right Look, yeah. The second you draw it on him, <coughs> you can see the rings there. One, yeah. two. That is old. Yes, and his teeth yes, more clean. Oh, God. Well, Should... start with shit. <laughs> we did it again. Yeah. And it was a bit of a shit show, but <laughs> and oh, uh, it's freezing ass cold. I don't know. What do you think? It's zero, close to it. There's ice on top of the buggy. Yeah, it's zero. It's below zero. Uh, and we we worked the shit out of this farm, up and down and back and forth, and finally, in some of the bottom fields that were just planted, came around the corner and we saw a female. We knew the male had to be there somewhere. A boy happened to know where to look, and it took us a minute to get on him, no getting it on us. Yeah, no, it wasn't easy to, to find him. You know, uh, I just realized how elusive these uh, little critters are, you know, and it's, I mean, we've got all our clothes on, it's super cold, um, and I mean, we've really worked hard for this animal this year too. Luckily, we were um, privileged to get Jordan here, who helped us a lot, so this is a phenomenal animal. Um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't easy, not at all. It was really hard work, but it's so rewarding with that, you know? And uh, if I look at this male and I see how old he is, it's, it, we could have not taken a better one. So well done, Jordan, thanks a lot. We really appreciate yeah. it. Um, we appreciate what you guys do for conservation. And uh, yeah, Sean. Another memory made, buddy. Absolutely. We won't forget this one for Jordan. <laughs> this one's going to have a story. I can promise you that. <laughs> no, thanks, Seth, George. And he sucked up three bullets, too. What a, what a machine, <laughs> huh? He didn't want to give up. No. It's quite thick, eh? Yeah, it's thick. Yeah. It's real thick. It's but this, this is an exceptional trophy, guys. Yeah. That's a outstanding, outstanding place. Shame there. Outstanding. Cape, Cape Graysback. What a beauty. Not easy to find, but very rewarding. Six down. Yep. Four to go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gearing up for an unforgettable safari experience in the Eastern Cape and you want to immortalize your hunt on film, look no further than my good friend Quibus. Quibus is not only a skilled videographer, he's also a licensed professional hunter, offering you the best of both worlds. With him, you'll capture the moments without compromising the hunt. You can find Quibus's contact details in the description below and don't hesitate to reach out to him to discuss how he can help you capture your next safari adventure. Your continued support means the world to us. If you've enjoyed our content, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell. This small gesture goes a long way in helping us grow the channel and explore more exciting facets of the great outdoors.